Good morning and welcome to Coffee with Craig, where we talk about all things 2A. We talk about firearms, firearms policy, politics, culture, media, you name it. We'll talk about it right here on Coffee with Craig. Uh, please take a moment to uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel as well as follow us on Facebook and click the notification button so that you'll know exactly when these programs go live. Also, if you haven't had a chance to do so, please visit fpcgear.com. That's fpcgear.com. Cool place to find all sorts of 2A swag, T-shirts, coffee mugs, uh, hoodies, stickers, you name it. Uh, but the good thing is, is that you know that every penny that you spend there goes right back into the fight for our right to keep and bear arms so you can support the Second Amendment and you can look good doing it. You can support us here at Coffee with Craig. That's fpcgear.com. All right. Now, here in the state of California, we have this program called the Armed Prohibited Person System. Uh, now, what this is, is this is a, a system whereby individuals who are legally prohibited from owning firearms are actually uh, known to be firearms owners are on a list. So what they do is they take a look at all the people who have uh, who have uh, 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 restraining orders against them, everybody who's been convicted of a felony in the state of, Ca in the state of California or known to be felons in the state of California, people who uh, have been convicted of misdemeanors, uh, or misdemeanors who are who they, which are prohibiting for a period of time, uh, and also people who uh, have been deemed uh, because of mental illness uh, have not, are not able to own or possess a firearm for a period of time. All those people are on a list, and what they do is they cross-reference that list with people who are have purchased firearms who are in our APHIS system, uh, which is a system that we use when you go to purchase a firearm. It just lets people know what firearms have been purchased. It's basically our firearm registry. Now, they don't want to call it a registry, but that's exactly what it is. They use it to register people to know who has what firearms. And now the goal of this list uh, is for them to then, if they find out that you are prohibited and you actually do own a firearm, well, then the California Department of Justice, working with local law enforcement, is supposed to show up to your home or place of business or whatever, and they're supposed to show up and take your firearms. That's what's supposed to happen. Now, back in 2013, there was a big, uh, big hullabaloo because there was literally a 23,000 uh, 23, person back order. I mean, we're talking, there were thousands, tens of thousands of people uh, who weren't supposed to own or possess firearms who actually still had their firearms. Now, mind you, we always said that, the, we always said that there was a real problem with the list. The apps list is notoriously inaccurate. Right, they 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 had wound up doing an audit in 2014, and what they discovered from that was that the courts weren't reporting, or the hospitals weren't reporting, or no, and those that were reporting were not reporting accurately or on time. Meaning that once again, there were people who were on the list, people who were prohibited, or wrong names on the list, or wrong names, people who were prohibited that weren't actually supposed to be on the list. But mind you. They went before the California legislature and they decided they were going to take our money, our DROS funds. DROS funds is the fees that we pay here in the state of California when we do the background check. It's money that's a fee that's supposed to go to pay for the background check. Instead, they took that money for another purpose, and that was to confiscate firearms from people who supposedly weren't supposed to have them. They said they didn't have enough money. So they went and they basically took the money from us. Now, Mind you, during that time, this was 2013, 2014, uh, there has been a continual backlog. In other words, they took the money, but they still weren't going after the guns. Now, that was under uh, former Attorney General Kamala Harris. Now, fast forward, now we have Attorney General Javier Becerra. Now, Javier Becerra has been in the news a lot recently. I mean, we're talking about a whole bunch really just kind of largely focusing on the fact that, well, hey, you know, he's uh, he's going after these people with guns. He's going after and he's taking guns from these people who are not supposed to own guns. You guys all know Javi. Uh, those of you on the national level, he used to be a congressman. Well, he's now the attorney general here in the state of California, one who repeatedly has, uh, well, we've had to deal with issues with him actually not following the law, but I won't go there. He's best known in California for suing Donald Trump. Uh, which is pretty much that and doing press releases is all he's been really good at. But in his defense, he has been good at addressing the list of people who are prohibited from owning and possessing firearms. 
So one of the things that they have done recently is they've actually, uh, you know, they actually came out with some information noting uh, their successes when it has come to dealing with, uh, once again, the armed prohibited persons list. Let's take a little bit. Let's take a little look at what they've done. And this is they he actually he actually released a report uh, just recently regarding their successes in dealing with the apps list or, or, or uh, disarming uh, people who shouldn't have guns. So let's take a look at their successes. So what he noted was in 2018 was, first of all, they set a record for the number of individuals uh, whose firearms they have, in fact, been able to confiscate or, or people uh, who they've been able to remove from the list. Uh, and that record right there, as you can see right there, is about 10,600 or 10,681. Now, those are people removed from the database, not people who guns were taken from. All right. Uh, they noted that there were actually 4,142 uh, instances where you had enforce agent enforcement, where agents actually went out to seize these firearms. Now, you may be asking, well, wait a minute, there's 10,000 people, over 10,000 people on the list and only 4,100 actions, well, what does that mean? Well, what that means, folks, is that if you look at it right here, the remaining 6,593 6, cases were people who shouldn't have even been on the list, right? 271 were deceased, and 6,268 are individuals who should not have even been on the list. Congratulations, Mr. Becerra. 61% of the people who were on the list are people who, as we have said, should have been on the list. I mean, we're talking, we've said this, we said this to the legislature. We've said this to the governor's office. We've said this, we've asked, we've begged for detailed audits of, of, of how that gross money was spent. But once again, we're still looking. 61% of the people who are on the list shouldn't have been there. They actually should, their names should not have been included on the list. 61% of the people who were removed. Now, with that, there were also a few things that they are not telling you or they're not including in their particular report. And those are things that I'd like to share with you as well. Take a look at this. Number one, what they will not tell you is that the apps list actually went up by almost 650 people. Take a look at this. So you see here in 2018, at the beginning of 2018, there were 22,574 people on the list. Fast forward to, to, to 2019, 2,322 people who were actually on the list. Now, what they're also not telling you, interestingly enough, go back to 2015. So from 2015, oh no, actually, I take that back. It pretty much stayed the same to 2017. But for the last few years, 2016 to 2017, 2017 to 2018, and 2018 to 2019, the number of people on the list has actually gone up. Hmm. But they're not telling you that. Now, other things that they're not telling you relating to, uh, relating to the particular list is they're not telling you uh, they're not mentioning the fact of how many firearms were actually confiscated that had to be returned, right? There are a lot of people, because think about this. We know that in many, there are a lot of cases where they went to confiscate firearms from people and the people, once again, we know that they shouldn't have been on the list. So if they should not have been on the list, then why in fact were their firearms confiscated? Hmm? Can someone please tell me that? Can someone please tell me why their firearms were confiscated if they shouldn't have been on the list? But they don't tell you that. They don't tell you how many people actually had their firearms confiscated that shouldn't have had their firearms confiscated. In other words, how many times did they have to give them back, right? That's one other thing that they don't tell you. Let's see. Let's take a look at what else. Uh, now, um, they, now, they confiscated firearms uh, from any, uh, did they confiscate firearms from any of the cases of the 6,200 folks uh, who shouldn't have been on the list? Yeah, notice that they don't point that out. They don't tell you whether or not they confiscated firearms from anyone who shouldn't have been on the list. So did they send agents out to confiscate firearms from people? Those people actually had to go to court, do whatever they had to do in order to get their firearms back. And did they get them back? Or were the firearms destroyed? Who knows? Because they won't tell. 
or at least they didn't tell in their report, which probably should have been something that should have been reported. Now, what else do they not talk about? Uh, in the 4,142 enforcement actions, uh, they only confiscated a little over 2,200 firearms. Now, 1,200 of those were firearms that they knew about. These are people at firearms that were actually in the app part of the apps, uh, that were actually a part of apps, right? They were actually part of the apps reporting. Another 1,200, another, another 1,000 or so were not included. They were not actually included as a part. In other words, these are firearms that they didn't, they had no idea about, right? But they're not telling you about any of that. They're not including any of that. So my question is, what happened in the other cases, right? I mean, is that such, is that such a, a far-fetched question to be asking? What happened in the other cases? Because think about this, folks. Look, I mean, just, just think about this. 4,100 actions, they seized 20, 2,200 firearms. So what happened in the other like 2,000 incidents, almost 2,000 case or incidents where they, where they wound up going into people's homes? What happened? So you had enforcement actions. Did you show up and no guns? What happened to the firearms? I thought they were armed and prohibited. Hmm. Hmm. Makes you wonder. Especially when you take a look at some of the photos that they include in their report. And there's a, by the way, there's a link to the report in the description of this video. But when you look at the firearms that are included, I mean, you have several instances where they, you know, they use their anecdotal evidence, and you have a couple of places where you have people with 20, 30 firearms that were confiscated. Well, then that just means that the number of people who actually had firearms who's you engaged in enforcement actions with, well, that number was a lot lower. That number of firearms that you confiscated from those, number of instances where you confiscated firearms from individuals was significantly lower. Now, mind you, uh, one of the recommendations that actually came out of this report was, well, the app system needs to be fixed and updated. No shit, Sherlock. We all know this. We've been saying this for as long as I have been dealing with these issues, as long as I have been before the legislature, which is 2013, you guys do the math. We've been saying that the apps system is shit. We've been saying that it's inaccurate. We've been saying that it doesn't work. And yet and still, you guys have put more money into it. You guys have been enforcing it. You guys have been going after people for a list that you know that the Department of Justice knows is wrong. When 61% of the, the people that you're going after are people who shouldn't even be on the list. Mm. Yeah, so... They're trying to, Javier Becerra is trying to couch this whole thing as, well, this is his big success story. This is, he's doing a cool thing. He's being very successful. When in reality, what's being demonstrated is this. Um, most of the people who are on the list shouldn't be there. And uh, what you've been successful is doing is finding out just how bad your department is screwing up. Uh, that's not something to brag about, Javi. It really isn't. At least, I'll give you this, at least you admit that you guys need to fix your screwed up database system. And let me just say that maybe you need to, maybe you need to get somebody outside of the Department of Justice to put together this database for you. Because pretty much what we've come to realize is when it comes to databases, you guys suck at it. Just saying. So anyway, folks, take a minute, uh, read the, read, go ahead, please take a minute and read the report. Cause I think once, I think you're going to find it very illuminating. Um, I think you're also going to find that, uh, well, when we start talking about things like, uh, when we start things like no fly lists and things like that and how when we start talking about creating government lists that are going to then cause the government to then go after people's uh, gun rights that are going to then cause people to lose their rights and people are going to have to defend them. When we start talking about creating these government-created lists that cause people to lose their rights, folks, we don't want any part of that because we know that there's one thing we know for sure, that if we have the government do it, they will likely screw it up. Hey, I'm just reporting. I'm just telling you what is. You don't have to like it. You just have to acknowledge it. 
Anyway, folks, that's going to be it for today's Coffee with Craig. We very much appreciate you guys tuning in. We appreciate you liking and sharing these videos, telling your friends about the Firearms Policy Coalition, because as I always love to say, we are the home in the fight for civil rights. Got to use them or you're going to lose them. You guys, take care. If you like our videos, follow, subscribe, like, and share.